Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number four, the Homework Solution Edition, in our incredible new tutorial series where you're teaching your Raspberry Pi who's boss. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice strong cup of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice. No sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this series of lessons on the Raspberry Pi, and we are using their most excellent SunFounder Ultimate Raspberry Pi Kit. If you don't have your hardware yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon where you can pick up your gear. And believe me, your life and my life will be much easier if we're both working on the same set of hardware. But enough of this shameless advertising. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the homework assignment. I'm going to show you the solution to the homework assignment that I gave in lesson number four. How many of you guys were able to do the homework? If you were, leave a comment down below. I am legend. And if you were not able to do it, then leave a comment down below. I folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Okay, hopefully you guys had fun doing this. This is a pretty simple little assignment. And so <clears throat> let me just jump in. This will be a quick lesson and show you my solution. First thing is you guys need to have the same circuit that you had in lesson number four. I took you through it step by step on this build, so I'm not going to redo it. If for some reason you didn't see lesson number four, go back and watch it. I'm just going to start with the working uh, with the working program. And so let's start up here. And what I'm going to need you to do is I'm going to need you to fire up your Raspberry Pi. And then I'm going to come over here to where my code view is. And then I'm going to kind of show you my solution to the homework. What was the homework that you get input from the user of how many times they want to blink the LED and then you blink the LED that number of times? Well, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to need to create a Python program. And so how I do that is using nano. You can see that I am in my squiggly directory, my home directory. Let's see what's in there. Okay, what's nice is I already have a Python folder. If you don't have a Python folder, you could do make dir from lesson number one Python like that. But I already have a Python folder, so I don't need to do that. Now, what I want to do is I want to create a Python program down in that folder. So since I'm in home, I would do that with nano, which will create the, <clears throat> the text file. And then where do I want it? I want it in Python. And then I want my blink and then we'll call it myblink.py.py and the .py is kind of important and boom we have a fresh new text editor all open up just ready to write the program now what am i going to need to do in this program well the first thing i'm going to need to do is i'm going to need to import an rp little i dot gpio as GPIO and so that's going to import the GPIO library. You're going to see a lot of this is a lot like what we did uh, in lesson number four, but now we're doing it inside of a program. Okay, what would we need to do now? Well, we would probably need to go ahead and tell which numbering scheme we want. And so we would do a GPIO dot set mode and then we want to use what? We want to use GPIO and we're going to use the board numbering scheme and on the board numbering scheme we are on what we are on pin 11 okay we are on pin 11 in that numbering scheme okay so let's go ahead and say enter and so then we'll need to do a gpio dot setup so we're going to set up that pin we're going to set up which pin we're going to set up pin 11 and then we're going to set it up as gpio dot out OK, so that is going to be an output. All right. Now that stuff we only need to do one time. But now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to ask the user for input. And then ask after asking the user for input, 
what we're going to need to do is we are going to need to uh, blink the LED that number of times. So what I would just say is like num blink is equal to input and then what do I want? I want the prompt for the user how many blinks do, do you wish for? How many blinks do you wish for? And then I to, like to put a space so the answer doesn't run into the question. And then I close the prompt. And then remember, if you put seven, it's going to ring, read seven, but it's going to read it as a what? As a string. So we need to take that input and go ahead right off the bat, and we need to convert that to what? An int. And I open that parenthesis. I got to come all the way out here, and I got to close that parenthesis like that. Okay, now, now we've got the number of blinks. Okay, now what would we do? We would say for, I'm just going to use the index i for my counter for i in range, and then we're going to go from zero to what? Num blink. And remember, it'll stop one before num blink, but since I'm starting at zero, it will all balance out okay like that and don't forget the colon there okay now you'll notice that it doesn't give you the indent so you've got a tab over so that you'll be inside that for loop and then what I can do is I can turn uh, I can turn it on GPIO I'm going to turn the LED on because what is a blink a blink is turn the LED on wait turn the LED off, wait. So what's the first thing I need to turn the LED on? And so I'm going to say GPIO dot output. Where am I going to output to pin 11? And then what am I going to output? True. I think I'm just going to make it one. That's easier because a one is the same thing. A, a integer one is the same thing as true. So I'm going to do a, an output of one. Now what do I need to do? I need to wait. How do I wait with a time.sleep? But in order to do a time.sleep, I have to what? Import time. And so now with that, I should be able to come down here and do a sleep. So now I'm going to do a time.sleep like that. And let's just make it one second. Okay, so I'm going to wait one. Now what do I need to do? A blink is turn it on, wait, turn it off. So now I'm going to go GPIO dot output output where 11 do what turn it off like that now what do I need to do turn it on wait turn it off wait so now I'm going to say gpio dot output okay <coughs> gpio dot output I'm I'm sorry time dot sleep and sleep one Okay, and so this should turn it on, wait, turn it off, wait, that's a blink, and then it'll do it the right number of times inside of the for loop. Okay, now after that, what do we need to do? We need to be good boys and girls, and we need to do a GPIO dot clean up so that it releases and everything is good. Does that make sense? Okay, could it really be that easy? I hope so. Now, how do we save it? Control X. Do you want to save it? Okay. Uh, and I just put in an uppercase Y. Ah, okay. Yeah. And now uh, I put a Y, an uppercase Y. Then do I want to save it as that program? Yes. And so like that. Now let's just do an LS into Python just to make sure that it is there into our Python folder. And yes, you can see my blink. So how would we run it? Python my blink dot pi, right? Wrong, wrong. What would that do? That would run Python 2.7. What do we want? We want Python 3. So we've got to come in and we have to say Python 3 like that. And now hold your breath. Oh, can't open my blink. No such file or directory. What is that? What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Tell me. Okay, my blink is not in my home folder. It's what? It's down in Python. So I have to give it the path to it. So it says go from where I am now to the Python folder and then run my blink. Okay, hold your breath. Ooh, 
how many blinks do you wish for I want five five okay let's see five all eyes on the LED one two three four five Shazam look at that all right that thing ran okay now let's see if we can run it again okay let's run it again how many bl blinks do you wish for three all right let's look one two three Shazam look at that okay that is great now what is the only problem what I ask you to do what I ask you to do was to go in and uh, I ask you to make it where it would keep running and not every time make you you know not every time make you uh, make you uh, uh, rerun the program so how would we do that well let's go back and edit that okay let's edit that and what we would want is we would want this whole thing we would want this whole thing in a while loop okay so we're going to say while and i'll just say continue equal equal while continue equal equal uppercase y as long as continue equal equal uppercase y then we want to do this stuff but now this stuff is in the while loop so we need to <clears throat> we need to scoot it over okay everything has to be tabbed for it to be in here plus I need a colon here like that okay now this I've got a tab now this I've got a tab now this I've got a tab this has got to be tabbed now that's all in there so as long as <clears throat> continue is equal to yes it'll continue <clears throat> Well, I better give it a value to start with. And so we're going to come up here. We're going to come up here and start with certainly you want to do it to begin with. So continue is equal to yes, like that. All right. Now, I made a mistake. This actually, you need to get the input inside the while loop as well. So we're going to need to tab that over and the while loop goes up here. Hopefully you guys caught that while continue equal equal y <clears throat> like that. And now I can get rid of that extra space. So every time it's going to ask for how many times you want to blink. I should have done that. I, I was not paying attention. right? But now we've got to give it some way to exit. And so here we're going to say uh, continue is equal to input do you <clears throat> want to continue like that and you can't see that behind me can you do you want to continue and then I'll put in parentheses y for yes and then close the parentheses and then put a space and then close the string close the input string you know the the prompt screen and then close the uh, input now here we want a string and because we want a string because we want a string yeah we want uh, because we want a string yes we want to leave it as a string so we're not going to change that input to an integer or anything else so now if it's a y when it goes back in the while loop it should continue and so uh while continue equal one no it should be while continue equal y that probably had you uh confused all right so now <clears throat> control x and then an uppercase Y and then an enter and boom okay so now let's run this thing so we're gonna say <clears throat> Python 3 Python my blink dot pi we're gonna click enter how many blinks do you wish for four hold your breath one two three four do you want to continue uppercase Y for yes? How many blinks do you wish for? Two. One. Two. Boom. 
do you want to continue? And now if I say no, it gracefully exits. Now let's make sure the program will run again to make sure that we cleaned up our GPIO pins. How many blinks do you wish for? I'll say three. Okay. One, two, three, and it still runs. Okay. Do you want to continue? I'm going to say no. All right. Now let's edit it again. And let me just show you where you get into trouble. Okay. What if we came down here and we were not good boys and girls and we didn't clean up our GPIO pins? Okay. Control X. Yes. Enter. Okay. Now let's run it. I think it'll run the first time. Okay. So we say, how many blinks do you wish for? Three. Okay. One, two, three. That's good. Okay. And then do you want to continue? No. All right. Now let's try running it again. Like that. Look at that. The channel is already in use. GPIO set warnings, blah, blah, blah. So you see, now the thing is kind of giving me errors. I don't know. Let's see if it will work. It might work or it might not. Sometimes it might work and sometimes it, it, it might not. It looks like this time it is working, but you can see that you're getting these errors and those errors will sometimes crash the program. And so what do we learn? We learn that when you exit the program, what you always have to do is you have to make sure that as you exit the program that you do a gpio.cleanup because when you don't do that you will get all types of strange errors okay all right guys that was just a quick uh that was just a really quick lesson on my solution to the homework what we'll do is tune in next thursday for the next premiere of the next lesson in this and what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be continuing to learn more and more about those gpio pins and we're going to be coming in and doing more and more exciting components from the sun founder kit okay guys man i hope that you are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making the lessons. If you enjoyed the lesson, make sure to give us a thumbs up. If you have not already, subscribe to the channel. When you do, make sure you ring that bell so you get notifications when future lessons come out. And share this with other people because the world needs more people who can do engineering and do programming and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com reminding you to revet, resist the metaverse. <laughs> resist the metaverse. Okay, guys. I uh, hope, hope you're enjoying this. I will let you go. Don't forget to drink your iced coffee. I will talk to you guys later. <laughs>